Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a 63-year-old female who presented with headache. A CT head was performed. She had come to the emergency department and we found this lesion here, a 3.5 centimeter predominantly cystic lesion with a thin high attenuation perimeter. Now those description those descriptive terms I think you should start getting comfortable with and find a way to simply but accurately describe the lesion that you're looking at. So this is a 3.5 centimeter cystic lesion with a thin high perimeter border and, and it's located in the right frontal lobe it is impressing upon and effacing the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle. You see, you see the frontal horn of the left lateral ventricle fine, but the one on the right is effaced. If you look at the deep white matter of the frontal lobes here and here, you see that maybe something's going on here. Do you see that? This is darker, lower attenuation compared with this white matter, and in fact, so is this here. This is the uh, external capsule, sometimes hard to see normally, but it's right in about here. You have the caudate nucleus, the putamen, and the globus pallidus, the three components of the basal ganglia, and the external capsule is between that and the insular cortex. Don't worry about all that anatomic detail if it's new to you. Uh, so this is a cystic lesion. What are the possibilities? Well, it certainly looks like a neoplasm. It could be a primary brain neoplasm or a cystic metastasis. An abscess also is a possibility. In the case of an abscess or tumor, the surrounding low attenuation could be edema. In the case of tumor, it could be actually extension of tumor cells and or edema. Okay, so there's a pretty startling, significant finding in the right frontal lobe, the deep right frontal lobe, 3.5 centimeter cystic mass with thin perimeter high attenuation. So what are we going to do with this? Well, this patient came into the ER, has terrible head pain, and it depends on what kind of tumor this is, assuming it is a tumor as to what is done next and the big question is is it a primary brain tumor or is it a metastatic lesion? Either of those will be treated differently. So they went ahead and they did a CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis which I think was wise in this case and I want you to look at this and see if you can pick up anything that catches your eye Okay, here's a little overview. I like to give you an overview so you can form some of your own impressions. Okay, chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Okay, I'll bet you noticed that the liver looks abnormal and there are numerous low attenuation round lesions in the liver involving the entirety of the liver, but uh, specifically both left and right lobes of the liver. The appearance here is typical of metastasis, so this is hepatic metastasis until proven otherwise, and that alone tells us that the brain lesion is also most likely a metastasis. It could be a primary brain tumor, but brain tumors, generally primary brain tumors, do not spread to liver or lung. It's usually the ver reverse. So we looked up through the chest here and we see, well, this is hyalur adenopathy. Hyalur adenopathy, subcarinal adenopathy, all this soft tissue which does not enhance. So you have normal enhancing vascular structures of the mediastinum, but here you have soft tissue which is not that. And those are enlarged nodes. Anything else catch your eye here? Well, if you look at the breasts, the right is partially cut off, 
but still I think you can tell there's an asymmetry of the breasts and considerably more soft tissue in the left breast than in the right. And actually I can, let's see, I think I can cheat a little bit and show you. There's the right breast. Here's the left breast. Okay, so quite a difference. So now we are thinking, of course, primary breast carcinoma in this, infil in this infiltrative mass here. Very often breast cancers are solitary lump, but this is a infiltrative appearing cancer. So you have an infiltrative breast cancer in the left breast with liver metastases with adenopathy in the mediastinum, which presumably reflects mediastinal metastasis as well. And the patient was brought to the ER because of severe headache from this solitary cystic metastatic lesion. So here you can see that the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle is compressed. Nice depiction of the quadrigeminal cistern. Remember the quadrigeminal cistern has superior and inferior colliculi. This is probably the, the two superior colliculi, the more superiorly positioned. Uh, this is also called the tectum or the quadrigeminal plate. And the cistern again is a quadrigeminal cistern. Here you have some cerebellum poking through the uh, tentorium. So this is all supertentorial brain, the cerebral hemispheres. And now over in this area, we're actually looking into the cerebellum, which is in the infratentorial posterior fossa compartment. And how could we be seeing the supertentorial cerebral hemispheres and the infratentorial cerebellum well, that's because the tentorium is shaped like a tent. And since it's shaped like a tent, the cerebellum can kind of poke itself through that, through that tent. And then you have a cut, one image going through that includes the cerebral hemisphere here and the cerebellum that's coming up through there. I don't know if that helps, but that's the best I can do with my hands here. So other normal structures, well, we've talked a lot about the cingulate sulcus. Let me make that a little bigger. We've talked about the cingulate sulcus and that's what we see here. And if you go forward and to the right, that's the right central sulcus. And if you go forward and to the left, that's the left central sulcus. That makes this band motor cortex, this band, sensory cortex. And of course that means it's representing the motor and sensory aspect of the contralateral body, which would be the left side of the body, and vice versa here, motor cortex and sensory cortex. But I want to introduce something else which I might have commented on in some of my other videos, and that is the parieto-occipital sulcus and that divides the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. Now you can easily see this fissure on an MRI in the sagittal plane because it's obliquely oriented but as you follow that upward this you see it gets closer and closer toward the back of the head and that's because it is angulated in such a manner at about a 45 degrees angle to separate the parietal and occipital lobes. And so that is the parietal occipital fissure. So here if we start at the top, you follow it inferiorly, you'll see it moving forward. You see it very nicely on these cuts here. See going across like that. So now you have along with the cingulate sulcus, which shows you where the central sulcus is, you have the parieto-occipital, which helps you divide the parietal and 
occipital lobes, and you already know the sylvian fissure, which is this, this fissure right here and here, and it's here and here, sylvian fissure, and as you go up higher, you kind of lose it because you are cutting in the same plane as the fissure when you get up a little higher here. So this is a case then of breast cancer with metastatic cystic brain lesion which brought the patient to the ER and subsequently demonstrated liver metastases and mediastinal metastases as well as a mass infiltrating the left breast which appears likely a primary breast carcinoma and is felt to underlie the other lesions elsewhere in the body. Okay, that's it for now.